Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. So this is just a quick video. I was actually working on my iPad on Procreate, designing a painting, and then I thought, why don't I just chuck the camera on and I'll just explain a little bit about it. So when it comes to my painting design process, I mainly start off in my sketchbook. So it will start off with some thumbnail sketches like this and then there'll be a final drawing so for example this here this uh, Lombardi poplar was actually this painting here so that's part of my process but I'm not a purist either and I think if technology can assist the design process then why not so quite recently I got an iPad and downloaded a program called Procreate which is really cool because it only cost about I think 16 bucks I mean it was pretty cheap I've got an Apple pencil as well and you can literally start drawing just like a sketch pad almost but using modern technology to do it so I think if you can use technology to make the design process easier, then why not use it? And especially something like an iPad with Procreate. It's really easy to use. And the cool thing about it is I don't even have to start with the thumbnail sketch part of it. I can actually just get straight into the painting design and even work it out as I go along because it's just so easy to erase things if you've made a mistake. Now, the other cool thing about using th something like Procreate is you can use it on the go as well and you don't have to like for example I don't have to be in my studio all the time with all my pencils and everything spread out so procreate <laughs> it's a lot cleaner and easier to use I can also just sit on the sofa of an evening and just sketch out a seascape design for example whilst I've got YouTube on or on watching something so I'm really enjoying using this program this is just a short video so I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes just showing you some of the functions of procreate I haven't been using it for that long at all so I'm still getting used to it and I'm someone that doesn't really uh, read the instructions much I just get straight into it and work it out but we'll have a look and then I'll show you a sketch that I've done that's a time lapse that I've done on this uh, Procreate program. I hope you enjoy this video we'll just get straight into it. So I'll just show you a couple of features of Procreate as you can see so far I haven't actually done that many drawings yet but I'm already finding it pretty useful so this was my very first one which I did do a painting following this. And I use a few different functions on here. So if, if I click, click down here, oh actually that's the airbrush function. That's really great for clouds, but mostly what I've been using is the painting one and uh, the flat brush here. And then what else we got? Oil paint and the dry brush I found really useful. And then I'll show you the color palette. So, I find this a little bit tricky to use. It does take a bit of getting used to just because it's different to having set colors on a paint palette. But one thing I found really easy is to adjust the values of the paint as well. So, what else have I done here? So I did a, did a few of these color sketches and I'll definitely do some more of these. They certainly take a bit longer than the black and white ones that I've been doing. But in order to speed up the process, some of these I've done in black and white, so they're just value studies. And this is really just like no different almost to if you were doing a pencil sketch, except I'm doing it on a computer or on an iPad with an Apple pencil. The cool thing as well is you can really zoom in and you can really go to town on fine detail if you want to. So it's really cool especially when you're doing details like mountains, for example. So lastly, I'll just show you this particular sketch that I did and I've recorded the process, so I'll just talk through that. So as I begin this digital sketch, first of all, I start outlining the composition. This composition incorporates an S or compound curve design where the track here in the foreground leads the eye 
towards the valley where the river snakes its way into the distance and we've got those mountains in the distance that are the main focal area of the painting. So this composition communicates rhythm. I've made sure this composition has a lower horizon line so there's plenty of room to fit in the mountains. As I begin shading in this digital drawing, just like with my paintings, the first thing I think about are all the values, so where are all the darks and lights in the scene that I'm drawing here? Value refers to how light or dark a subject is, and we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground, whereas in the distance as landforms recede, darks are not as dark and lights are not as light, and that's because the value scale narrows. So these distant mountains are more of a mid-tone where the shadows are, and then as I work forward in this drawing, those mountain shadows are starting to get darker and the darkest shadows are in the mountain on the left here. Once I'd marked in those major zones of shadows and established a tonal dynamic, I then worked back in the painting working on the sky, I was also using the airbrush function here, and then adding details on the mountains and what I was able to do was zoom in and easily draw in those details. Now I worked my way towards the foreground and I was mostly using the flat brush function and again I was zooming in so I could draw those finer details. When it came to marking in the grass in the foreground I keep in mind that grass is one of the lighter values to be found in the landscape. And then I used the oil brush function to create the illusion of thick grass. Just like with many of my paintings, I was saving the lighter values until the end, and that was on the mountains and in the stream in the midground. And then I finished up this sketch by adding some finer details to the foreground and midground, mostly the suggestion of small shrubs and trees. This digital sketch was really useful when I came to paint the colour study for this because I could already see where all the major zones of lights and darks and all the midtones are. And this is definitely just as useful as a pencil sketch. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that little time lapse video there. And I've actually already been able to use that sketch that I created there, the Rees Valley on Procreate, and I've done a color study already. So I'm gonna use this color study for a larger painting. I also filmed the process of this as well. So let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see me or see how I painted this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to see more content, check me out on Patreon and I also have full length videos available from my website. If you just click on the link below, I'll put all the links in the description box. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.